There's no doubt, today more than ever, we all need a little uplifting. Times are scary, and the world can seem lonely and frightening, but God is always present. God loves us and wants us to know He is here and always there when we need Him. The Warriors for Christ podcast seeks to uplift, edify, and encourage you to be the light and salt in a dark and tasteless world. They have new episodes weekly. Be sure to subscribe and share the Warriors for Christ podcast with your friends and family. Find the Warriors for Christ podcast podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Player FM, Stitcher, Deezer, Amazon Podcast, and on their website, warriorsforchrist.podomatic.net. That's the number four, warriorsforchrist.podomatic.net. Warriors for Christ, letting the Bible speak and teach for itself. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Kathy and I were just watching... The first time, actually, I've seen such a thing, a press conference with Pete Buttigieg. And I'll tell you, it's at the White House, and he's up there at the podium where McEnany would be if she weren't out. You know, He's like he's playing president, right? Like this is what it would be like. But I have never, I'm sure they've done these before, but I have never seen a press conference ever by themselves with the Secretary of Transportation ever. In fact, the only other Secretary of Transportation I can think of was Elaine Chow, Mitch McConnell's wife. Trump gave her that job to be nice to McConnell. They're trying to make Judge look like he's smart, knows what he's doing. You know, I don't even know if he has like a driver's license and drives a car, the Secretary well, of Transportation. I, he's I very be young. And he's, yeah, and he's very polished. And I think that he's it's not that been, young. He's got gray hair. I'm, politically speaking, though. I mean, you have Pelosi, who's like 110. That's true. But so he's, you know, for a politician – but they're they're grooming him for something larger. This is a stepping stone for him. They see him as I don't know about presidential material, but maybe vice presidential oh my material. Help. Um, God they help see us. him moving on beyond something beyond this. This is a stepping yeah. stone. And you could tell when he was standing there talking, he was extremely excited to be there and and like a kid in a candy store and very happy. Yeah. He couldn't stop smiling. He's a big boy. But you know, I think the the very uh, left radical liberals love somebody like him. He speaks their language. He's a gay man with a kid, and he's, a, in their mind, an icon and in his own mind. But he represents how they feel. And, and the way he talks, he's extremely woke. Um, he, he thinks that America's racist, that everything we do is racist uh, to keep black people down or brown people down and to elevate white people. He agrees with that kind of well, thing. Well, this was a very strange thing because— I know it's hard to watch any of these Democrats talk, especially oh, I can't stand it. Pete Buttigieg. I mean, he's he's probably outside Ugh. outside of like the immediate like Biden, Kamala. Yeah. He's right there at the top of my list of most disliked people around. Yeah, Biden. I agree with that. But he was doing this. He was he had this press conference today, which was really to show that he is, like I said, smart, knows what he's doing. He can handle things, even though there's a transportation crisis. He talked about everything but the supply chain crisis as a secretary of transportation. But it's it's interesting to watch these Democrats speak, and then they take questions from liberal reporters and what questions they ask. Ask They're on another planet. Remember they that are. that book series uh, well, by Joel, Joel Gray was the guy's name. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus, yeah. and we're like from different planets. That's us with the Democrats. So he's talking about— Republicans are from Earth. And Democrats are, are from, from Mars. All kinds of other planets. Yeah. He's talking about money they have yeah. to build roads. And the, and then he takes a question from someone in the audience, one of the press. I can't tell who they all are because they're all wearing masks. So I don't know who's who. But it's the uh, it could be the woman. It's hard to tell because she's wearing a mask. Could be that lady that didn't believe April. Sarah Huckabee that she baked. Yeah, that was her. Was that, okay. April. I think it was April was. Ryan. Yeah, that was her. It might have been April Ryan. Hard to tell she's wearing a mask. But anyway. She talked about yeah, this is crazy. the road system of the United <laughs> States was built based on racism. And yes. I never heard such a thing before. And then Mayor Pete talked about the racism in the roads and the bridges, which I mean, this is so strange. 
Mayor They're Pete, applying racism to inanimate objects now. <laughs> Mayor Pete said that roads were built to oh separate black and white communities and that there are there are bridges that were built so so low that buses coming from historically black neighborhoods couldn't go under the bridges to get to the beaches. That is insane. And maybe maybe there are they really believe this. Yeah, crap. they do. Maybe there are bridges that are too low for the buses in 2021 to go over them, but when the road was built in 1950 or 1960, maybe buses were smaller. Exactly. You know, um everything is racist and everything in this country was done. No matter what it was, a, a road, a bridge, whatever it is, a tunnel was built to disenfranchise African Americans. This is insanity, and to Mayor Pete, it makes complete sense. Well, you know what's happened? Uh, the country is a lot less racist than it used to be. People are a lot less racist than they used to be. You have interracial marriage. You have um, interracial couples on commercials. You, nobody cares anymore. So now that th that they've won that battle, but they don't want to admit it. Now they have to turn to inanimate objects and make them racist because they're running out of people well, to call that name. There was – I'm not going to play the audio to this. I'll just tell you. But Kamala Harris was being briefed by a NASA scientist over the weekend who, in, in which she said just scared the living daylights out of me that this woman's a heartbeat away from I the presidency. I told you presidency. she'd be worse than Biden. She, she scared the hell out of me. She – Okay, so the Biden administration has taken NASA and brought it back to the mission that Barack Obama had NASA on, right, climate change. And this NASA scientist is going over some satellite data from space of, mm -hmm. of trees and climate change. And then Kamala Harris gets involved with the – interrupts him and starts asking him about climate justice and asked if the NASA satellites can determine – how many black people are near trees as opposed to white people near trees. She thinks that trees around the America are put in place due to racism and black people are not as close to trees as white people. Now, there may be truth to that because a lot of black people live in big cities. We live like in Florida where there's a tree every yeah, six inches. Yeah, what about inches. Atlanta though? Uh, that's There's a city. Trees are, sure. No, but there are trees but everywhere. I agree with you. The largest I, black city. I agree with you. There are trees everywhere. I've been there many times. But, there are trees everywhere. But if you live in a big city like New York, okay, there are not as many trees as if you live in the suburbs. And she's talking about like I never. This ever occurred to me before. She thinks that I guess she thinks trees are racist because yes. they do not grow near African American people. I, I don't know. But all this makes sense to these social justice warriors. And it's this insane. is – This is – there's no meeting of the minds between us and them. And you know, I was talking to – No, I agree with you. There's no, there's no convincing them of, of their irrational thinking. They truly, truly believe this. Well, it used to be not that long ago, even when Clinton was – I will was say – I'll go back to the Clinton era, okay? And he left office in 2000. So we'll go up to Clinton, at least up until Clinton – Maybe even during the time G.W. Bush was president, Democrats and Republicans, we disagreed on a lot of things. Abortion, Republicans and Democrats disagreed on gay rights, and there were, there were a handful of things. But there was still a common culture that we all shared, and in the big picture, we all agreed in democracy and America and all this stuff. And now the Democrats have gone – they're not even left anymore. They are radical social justice warriors – and there's just no reasoning with them. There is no area of compromise with us and these people because mm -mm. they're too radical. Now, Chris, they've gone so left, they've fallen off the edge. Yeah. Now, Chris Christie, Chris Christie, I'm, this is in the Huffington Post. And I know a lot of people say, oh, that means Huffington Post. I read everything. Don't just read what you agree with. Read all the liberal stuff, too. And you really should read the liberal stuff. It's very stuff enlightening. Because you need to know what these loons think. Okay, this is the headline, Huffington Post. Chris Christie gives Trump and Republicans a blunt warning about 2024. And I got a warning for you, okay? Uh, get it, you know, just keep your mouth shut. It says here, uh, Chris Christie told a Republican group over the weekend that it's time for the party to move beyond Donald Trump. Um, and he goes on. Yeah, he um, wants to run for president, a, that's yeah. why. Um, in a separate interview with CNN, Chris Christie fired a warning shot at Trump, saying the former president, hey, Huffington Post liberals, you know, you're using violent uh, phrasing here. I know it's figurative, but uh, remember Sarah Palin? They gave her a hard time when she said she was targeting certain districts. Mm. Uh, in a separate interview with CNN, Chris Christie fired a warning shot at Trump, 
saying the former president had to choose whether he would be a leader for tomorrow or a figure of yesterday. Um, and it goes on. They're panicked because this is, he's going to be campaigning for next year, and they're, pan- they're freaking out. Here, here's the thing. Anyone who says, anyone who's a Republican, who says we've got to move beyond Trump, cross them off your list, never listen to them again. Okay. They're done. They're done. Uh, no, there, there's no, there's never any moving from, and 100 years will be on Trump still. The MAGA movement will be around. There is no moving beyond Trump. Uh, and the, the people that say that uh, they don't like Trump or he's this or he's that, they never liked him anyway. They're never Trumpers. Chris mm-hmm. Christie was always a never Trumper. That's true. And, you know, President Trump, you know, President Trump had some people around him who were a bunch of traitors. Chris Christie's one of them. And uh, Chris Christie thinks he's going to be president. He's planning on running. And uh, the only way I would vote for Chris Christie is if Donald Trump made the very bad decision of choosing him to be his running mate. Then I'd have to vote for Chris Christie because I'm going to vote for Trump. But the, the Republicans should not even have a primary process. This is not even up for debate. There should Anyone who run now, – now Huckabee is different. Huckabee may run in the primaries. He kind of just does it for fun. Remember the at the in in mm-hmm. uh, the 2015 debates, he's like, "Oh, I'm wearing a Trump tie." Do you he, think Trump's you know, gonna have a hard time but, getting a, a running a vice president? No, no. There's a there's a bunch of people that'll be his vice president. Ron DeSantis, no, all kinds of people. But there should not even be a primary. Should not even be a primary. It should just be given that mm-hmm. he is going to be the nominee. And there's a lot of these people telling you that um, we need to move beyond Trump. We're tired of Trump. People are tired of Trump. I'm not tired with Trump. I know those of you that listen to this program are not tired of Trump. Anyone who tells you they're tri- tired of Trump either were A, a never Trumper, Republican, fake Republican, or a Democrat. Mm-hmm. And third, maybe fake MAGA. There's a lot of fake MAGA out there. So, you know, Chris Christie, I don't care what he has to say. I mean, I, uh, he's never going to be president. Nobody likes this guy. Never. Um, he He ended his career when he did this love walk with Obama on the beach. Now, I understand that the hurricane hit and, and all of that, and Obama was president at the time. But he didn't have to do this romantic stroll hugging him like they were, uh, you know, a couple. You know, it was too much. It was, oh, it was a little too, <laughs> too strange, and he can't be trusted. You know, I want to talk about two things real quick that struck me with Biden. This whole thing with the, the illegals giving them $450,000. And the fact that Biden, when he was asked about it last week, said that it was garbage. It, wasn't, it was a garbage report. Those are his words, and it wasn't going to happen. And then he turned around a day later and said, oh, it is going to happen. That tells you that that to me was proof of what I thought all along, that he is not running the country at all. He's totally out of the loop. And I have said all along that he lives a very sheltered life and that his wife, I believe, keeps him from knowing what's going on. I don't think he knows that his poll numbers are down. I don't think he watches the news at all. And I think his wife keeps him completely sheltered in a bubble. And I don't think he has any, she probably tells him the exact opposite. And the fact that he didn't Mm. even know, like when Pete asked him about that, he didn't even know that that was happening. He's like, what are you, he was in shock. What are you talking about? That makes no sense. That's garbage. Well, then he, then he left the the podium and they pulled him aside. Oh no, sir, we're, we're doing that actually. Mm -hmm. That tells you that he's totally, you know, people want to write it off that he's incompetent and he's forgetful. That's not the problem. He is out of the loop. He is not running the country. He's being kept from knowing what's going on. And they did not brief him on that. And he did not know that uh, that was going to happen. And then they corrected him. So who's making these decisions? Well, and I'm telling you, his wife, okay. I promise you, is not letting him watch I the news. I want to disagree with you has no clue what's happening. I'm going to disagree with you on this one a little bit. This thing about the supply chain, this is a big— No, so I'm about the illegals. I, I mean, I'm sorry, I misspoke. On the giving the $450,000 to the illegals. No, 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 I'm going to disagree with you on this. This is a I misspoke. This is a big change. What's happened with this is insane. He didn't, when Peter Ducey asked him about it, they can say anything they want. He, d- he had no clue. He had no clue. And then they said— Because he wasn't no. told. But this is what's changed He was out about of the loop. That. This yeah. is what's changed about it. They're no longer even running things by him. In the beginning, mm-hmm. they used to tell him. They used to run things by him. It didn't mean he was making the decision, but they would tell him. Now they become so comfortable running the country without the president, mm-hmm. they don't even bother briefing him any longer. You understand? This is what this is a this is a big change. 
He's never been running the 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 show, but it, but they made him feel as if he was, and they would brief him. They would have meetings with him. They would act as if they were asking right. his advice. And they're not. This anymore. is the first time that there's been something major that we've seen publicly where they didn't even bother to tell him, and they made a major policy decision. Yeah. So that's they're a, doing many things without him. But that's a big change. Yeah, and that's then the thing change. with the supply chain. Where he his his new thing now, and you're going to see this as a tactic on the left. Now that he said this, his new thing now is that well, you don't know what he said. Well, we were at a restaurant, and we were going to ask the people next to us. Yeah, like he eats in a restaurant with every you know what's the supply chain, and they probably don't even know what it means. Well, what the hell does that mean? First of all, we all know what the supply chain means. This is not a difficult concept. It's the it's the chain that happens from when goods come from another country into a port get on a truck and go to stores. I mean, is that so complicated? It's not hard. But now his whole thinking is, well, you don't even have to know how to define the supply chain. So so that's, that's well, what his he, answer. So what is he saying? What he's that saying was- That you can't define it exactly, that it doesn't exist. I he, mean, that's the weirdest logic I've ever what heard. What Biden is saying is, since you don't, he assumes people don't know what the supply chain is, which of course they do. We all do. But what he what he thinks people don't. Right. So because you don't know what it is, because you can't explain it, it how, how do you know that there's a problem? Exactly. With it? That We're is the craziest yeah. thinking. And he brought that up, you know. But he won't take questions from any real reporters. He did take 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 some from Pete Ducey once in a while to look like he's tough, and then he starts screaming and yelling, raving like a lunatic. But for him to come out and say. Well, you don't even know what the supply chain means. And I heard somebody say that on, on another news thing. They say the same thing that yeah. he said on Fox. They said it. And I'm thinking, well, we do know what it means, but say we don't. Say somebody doesn't know exactly how to define it specifically. What does that mean? That it doesn't exist? That it doesn't affect people? They cannot give you a definitive answer or a solution to this problem. The problem is still not resolved. They're just not covering it in the news. They've yeah. moved on. The problem still exists. I was just reading an article that larger stores like Walmart and Target, they're not really affected by this. They actually had another system in place uh, in case something like this happened. It's really affecting small business. And I've always been under the belief, and I think this has to do with the new mandate they're trying to push, that that the liberals want to destroy small businesses. They're in with all these big companies like mm -hmm. Amazon and Walmart. They're in with all these big guys. Mm -hmm. They want to destroy the small businesses. That that does. They don't donate to well, their campaigns. You know, with, they want them out of here. With the supply chain, everyone knows what it is. Exactly. Sorry, Biden. It's not but, that difficult. But here's the thing. People shouldn't have to think about the supply chain. That's right. It should just be. You should be able to go to the store and get your stuff and leave. Especially and in America. One of the, the – the federal government only really has a handful of things that they're responsible for, and one of them is trade. And this supply chain issue is not supposed to be something that's on any American's mind. No. You're supposed to be able to go to Walmart or whatever other store you go to, get what you need, whether it's a padlock or a bag of dog food, without even thinking about it, this idea – that you may not ha uh, be able to get what you want. The thing is that was so upsetting about that, what you just said, is their answer to that was, well, you need to lower your expectations. Yeah. So don't expect to go to the store yeah. and see the dog food you want or get the Christmas tree you want. Lower your expectation. No, 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 no. That's what you do in a third world country, not in America. I have never heard an administration ever, and I'm 50 years old, ever tell the American people to lower their expectations. Now, listen, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, there's a lot more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be back right after this. From author Sherry Chapman comes the book, A Killer Revisited, available on Amazon. Detective Jules Poulton is one of the best at tracking down murderers, but something beyond her experience came to Edmond, Oklahoma. When the serial killer reaches out in a cryptic letter, it reveals a government conspiracy at the highest level. Will she be able to stop an army experiment gone rogue? Find out when you read A Killer Revisited. If you love thrillers, you will love this book. With a well-thought-out plot, lots of twists and turns, it will keep you you engaged and captivated. This is a true thriller from beginning to end. A Killer Revisited from author Sherry Chapman. Available on Amazon. Order your copy right now. 
Beautiful jewelry says so much about you. It says you have good taste and enjoy nice things, that you appreciate beauty as well as the world around you. The Ocean Rhyme Shop on Etsy, online at oceanrhyme.etsy.com, carry handcrafted Baruch pearl jewelry that's stunning and unique, just like you. They make gorgeous pearl pieces like earrings, bracelets, necklaces, and a whole lot more. Everything at oceanrhyme.etsy.com is lovely and sparkly, perfect for yourself or someone you care about as a gift. Artist Julia creates the most stunning pearl pieces. You will love the jewelry you buy from oceanrhyme.etsy.com. Each piece is made with care and is very special. Whether you want black pearls, golden South Sea pearls, Tahitian pearls, or freshwater pearls, you will find it at oceanrhyme.etsy.com. They have a wide variety to choose from. Before you shop for jewelry or gifts anywhere else, be sure to visit oceanrhyme.etsy.com. Share the link on all of your social media so your friends can discover the shop too. Oceanrhyme.etsy.com. Oceanrhyme.etsy.com. From author Jatika Six Colors Gibbs comes your next must-read book, Until Now, available on Amazon. Until Now is a book about the first 25 years of the author's life. It includes childhood trauma, abuse, and the author being forced to hide their true self, being abandoned, and many, many other things. The author's hope is to reach readers that can relate and let them know that they are not alone in their trauma. They are not at fault for the terrible things that's happened to them. They are not victims, but are survivors, and together we can get through anything. Author Jatika Six Colors Gibbs has been writing poetry since childhood and until now includes the author's life story, but also includes related poetry between chapters. Until now, from author Jatika Six Colors Gibbs. Order your copy right now on Amazon. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. You know, this is just a sad story. You know, it's ever since, ever since Biden took office, every day is just sad stories. When, when Trump was president... It was all good stories. You know? You know what I mean? I, look at this story. Look at this. Nearly 50 shot during the weekend in Chicago. And, you know, the, the, see, it doesn't even really make the news. So many people get shot in Chicago. It doesn't even make the news. You know, there's this trial going on of, of Kyle Rittenhouse. George Floyd's nephew made a video and posted online, said there are people in the courtroom taking photographs of the jurors so they can identify them and intimidate them. Is basically, why else would you be taking photographs of the jury? Mm-hmm. Because they're up there in secret. You know, listen, everyone is for justice in this country when it comes to innocent people being killed. If you really, truly are someone who cares about innocent people being killed, go to Chicago and stop what is going on there. And it's a liberal town. Everyone in Chicago is a Democrat. There's not any Republican within like 100 miles of Chicago. People are killed every weekend, and it doesn't even hardly make the 50 shot. Yeah, that's incredible. I mean, that's like a, a, a bus filled with people shot. And I don't know how many are dead and how many lived and how many will die of their wounds down the road or how many are disabled and everything. It, it, they don't care because people are shot. It's a black area, uh, it's a poor area. And nobody cares. And these people that get on TV and rant and rave and and criticize Trump and other politicians for being racist, they're not doing anything about this. They they don't care either. It's like it's like a forgotten city. Well, it's really sad. You know, I feel very bad for the people that live there. Terrible. Some of them can't get out. Get out, and they're stuck there. And 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 they maybe they just don't have the money to leave or whatever reason. But nobody is going to go in and help them. They keep electing these mayors that do absolutely nothing. And, um, you know, I know Trump talked about sending in the National Guard, and I wish he would have done that. I really wish he would have cleaned up that area and really cracked down. Um, uh, but, you know, it's, it's been that way for a long, well, long the time, reason they don't and do nobody anything. seems to care. The reason the Democrats don't do anything in Chicago is because it's a Democrat town. So the Democrats are responsible for it. So there's, there's no way they can exploit it politically for their political gain, and, and that's all they care about. And— 
now we're getting into the cooler months, and when it gets cold, cold, Chicago is super cold. The wind that comes off of Lake Michigan, the wind chills yeah. are really The murders bad. go down. Yeah, because people can't go outside. Right. And as soon as they have their first warm day, yeah. a lot of scores get settled. And this this goes on. It's every weekend, every weekend. It's awful. Doesn't make the news anymore. I'm reading this in Breitbart, conservative news, and they they, they just don't care. When I say they, I'm talking about the media. Yep. I haven't seen uh, where's where's um, Joy Reid? Joy Reid on that one. Where's you know uh, April Ryan asking Buttigieg She's about too- the racist roads? What about Chica- 50, 50 Exactly. And, and because it's Chicago, we know of the fifty. Most of them. If not all were black, and if they weren't black, they were probably Hispanic. Mm-hmm. Okay, because there's a there's a lot of gang warfare in Chicago that's black versus Hispanic, and there's other regular turfs that don't involve different ethnicities. But almost everybody there is shot without question, if not 100 percent, is a minority. And April Ryan's not asking about that; she's concerned about some road that was built in the 50s that she claims was racist, something that happened over 50 years ago. Joy Reid's to too busy now. Uh, calling Winston Sears a white supremacist. Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And and so far as the people that live in Chicago, they if you're listening to us in Chicago, I know we have listeners in Chicago, get out. If you're the poorest of the poor and you're living in Chicago, you can get out. You, you If you're the poorest of the poor <clears> – <throat> You make a living in one of two ways. If you're like doing something legal, Mm -hmm. you either on either. And I know when I say this, people say, oh, he's saying all people. No, I'm not saying if you're the poorest of the poor, you either have a very low income job, like working in a fast food joint. Right. Or you're on government assistance. You can get those kind of jobs anywhere. You can get government assistance anywhere. Right. You need to get out of Chicago. You need to take your family, take your kids and get out of Chicago. There's a lot of rural Places where they have lots of trees. Well, and there's, a, there's where all, you can live yeah. that, that for for a lot less money. And there's also cities where they don't shoot fifty people every week. Exactly. You know, and it's where shame. where we live, if there were fifty people shot this weekend and thirty eight next weekend and forty two the weekend after that, I, I would I would move. Leave. Yeah, exactly. We'd move, and you know, we, even if we if we had one weekend, we'd be like, well, what happened? But if it was happening regularly, we'd be out of here. And I think a lot. I'm not sure how it is in Chicago. I'm assuming. The people live there in government housing, so they don't have to worry about selling home. But there might be people that own homes, and that not might be many, difficult. Not or, very many because you probably have a hard time selling. These are like renters. These aren't. These probably aren't most of them are renters, or I don't know really too much about it. I've been to Chicago a couple mm-hmm. times, but it was a long time ago, and I was in like the main city area, you know, at yeah. Marshall Fields and all that stuff. Go, I was there That's visiting the, friends yeah. and in the in the main city area. So I don't know about these other outside areas or. How it is, but it was it was such a great city, and I think it still is. Chicago overall is a great city, a great place. Um, they have Wrigley Field and, and a lot of amazing things, but this is a stain on Chicago, and they can't seem to get this under control. And I don't see the mayor ever, ever going on TV offering any kind of solutions. Have you ever seen her go on TV and say, "All right, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to solve this problem." I think in her mind, it's part of the culture and uh, it's yeah. totally acceptable. It's just part of the, the the gang culture and that's the way it is. And and I'm not going to mess with it. I, I don't know. I don't understand how Democrats just keep, don't do anything. They make it worse. They make the, the the country worse. They mess up everything. You know, here's something interesting I've read. Gavin Newsom, speaking of, of uh, Democratic leaders, Apparently he's been MIA for weeks. He's canceled 12 days. things. Today's the 12th day. What is going day. on with him? Today, nobody knows. Today is the 12th day wow. since Gavin Newsom's been seen in and, public. And this is a guy who is always, you know, in the public eye. And and now something mm-hmm. that's very strange. Yeah, and he was going off to that climate summit. He canceled that. Oh, his, my Today goodness. his wife tweeted something and then she deleted it. Because, really? Yeah, and – it was the, the tweet wasn't anything well, newsworthy. Well, the truth will come out eventually, but He's, I'm very curious. Today is the twelfth day since Gavin Newsom's Speaking been. Speaking of governors, real quick, uh, to put any rumors to rest, Governor DeSantis just filed to run for reelection in the state of Florida for governor today. So. Mm-hmm. I'm excited about that. I want him to stay governor for another four years. I think he's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Um, I know you think he'll be Trump's running mate. I don't. I hope so. I've said that all along. I don't think he will be. I don't think he's a second fiddle guy. I think he will run in 2028. Um, mm. He's pretty young. 
And I think he wants to finish the things he has started in Florida. He has made a lot of positive changes. And don't believe what the media tells you. The fact that so many people are moving here. I just read an article the other day, or they said on the news, on the local news, we get snowbirds every year, right? Canadians, French Canadians especially, come down to South Florida. They own condos and they come down and they come like in October and they stay through like March or April. We call them snowbirds. Now, this, and then they go back to Canada. Now they said on the news, the snowbirds are moving here permanently. They're never going back because of the lockdowns, because of Trudeau and how strict they were and that they are moving to Florida on a permanent basis. Everybody moving to Florida now, I would say out of, I would say out of a hundred people moving to Florida, I would say probably 75% are moving because of Ron DeSantis and because of his policies and because they feel that Florida is a freer place well, to be in because of the reaction to the lockdowns. The, this just came out over the weekend, and courtesy of Ron DeSantis, because he's been following us and gets it in the news. But for the first time ever in Florida history, registered Republicans outnumber registered Democrats. That's awesome. And the reason the numbers are up is because people moving from California, Pennsylvania, wherever they're moving from, they're coming here, they register to vote. Yep. Republican, and it's interesting that they're registering to vote because when people – people move to Florida all the time, but when people move to another state, registering to vote is usually at the bottom of their list, and people are registering to vote right away. immediately. That's amazing. Because they're so fed up with the Democrat policies up north. So that's uh, – and, and out west. Well, this has been – Florida has been a Republican state since 1998. When Jeb Bush became governor in 1998, the mm-hmm. Republicans took over the Florida legislature too. And the Democrats had run Florida since, you know, Reconstruction until then. And, and it's been – there have been Republicans from time to time. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it's been a solid Republican state since 1998. But we have three or four areas that are heavily Democrat. or The Orlando, Florida area where Walt Disney World is, um, Palm Beach County where Mar-a-Lago is, Miami, that entire county, and Broward County where yeah, Fort Lauderdale is. those four counties. And those four counties are Democrat, and the rest of the state's hardcore Republican, but I'm glad that Republicans are outnumbering Democrats for the first time. It used to – and you know, there's been another big shift that no one has really talked about. I think people know about it, but they haven't thought about it too much. When I first started doing talk radio, if someone was a retiree in Florida, a senior citizen, we just assumed they were a Democrat. That's no longer the case. Mm-hmm. The the new generation of retirees tend to be Republican. It's yeah, not and like our the generation will be retiring, God help us, in 15, 20 years. We're getting older, and I think our generation, as a reaction to all this wokeness, I think it's going to be drastically Republican. Don't you mm-hmm. think, our generation, when yeah. we become oh, yeah. retirees and stuff? Yeah, and uh, the— the, millenn- the millennials, which is the age of AOC and Mayor Pete, millennial, millennials are not the young kids. Millenn- you know, Mayor anymore. Pete's a millennial, and he has yeah. gray hair, right? Millennials are older than you think. The generation after them, I guess. Generation the, Z. Whatever that means. But generation, the Generation Z, I believe, are going to be conservative and not liberal and not woke. And it, I know it sounds crazy, but I'll tell you why. Mm-hmm. We uh, the other day we went to Chipotle and they were only open for mobile orders. You could not order inside the restaurant. And we and I know you guys have seen similar things where you live. Retail businesses are having a hard time finding employees, yeah. and the reason they're not having a hard time finding employees are because people that work those types of jobs usually are between like sixteen and twenty two, mm-hmm. and they won't take those jobs anymore. And what What's happening is people that are 16 to the early 20s are finding ways to make money at home, whether it's being an influencer on Instagram or YouTube. Well, they can make more money. Yeah, or TikTok or crypto and all these things. So what you – Generation Z, the generation after the millennials, okay – they're they're an entrepreneurial generation. That's a hard word to say. Entrepreneurial. I got to say it slow. <laughs> but they're an entrepreneurial generation at at a very young age with before even going to college or even completing college. I think they just so uh, yeah. When you when you have pe- entrepreneurs, even if they have even if they are like say a TikTok influencer, mm-hmm. right? Like if there's some uh it could be a girl who who does TikTok videos in her bikini, okay? 
she's an entrepreneur now because she's making a lot of money, more, more money than if she were working at The Gap, you know, like in the 80s, right at that age. Or on OnlyFans. Yeah. Well, well <laughs> I mean, yeah, they make a lot true. of money on that. No, that's, um, no, that's true. Okay. It could be, a, it could be a woman who's on OnlyFans too, right? This is, they're entrepreneurs. And what entrepreneurs hate more than anything is paying taxes for a bunch of freeloaders. We'll see. So, so this, this generation, the TikTok generation, so I think that's what I would call them, this generation Z, I don't even know what that means, but this, this influencer TikTok generation, they each have their own little small business with their following on social media or if, mm-hmm. or if they're in crypto, whatever they're doing. And people that are entrepreneurs work very hard for their money and they don't want to support all of these social justice programs. So I, I think- Maybe. I think that generation, the one after millennials, are going to be conservative. Well, when I was in Chipotle the other day, I was talking to the lady. There's a lady that works there that I see all the time. She's been there a few years. She's an older lady. She's 60. And um, I was getting drinks and she was at the drink thing. I said, oh, how you doing? She said, fine. And I said, um, because they had only been taking digital orders for a while. I said, are you guys having trouble getting workers here? I said, is that why you're doing digital? And she said, yes. She said, she's been in food service 40 years, she told me. She said, I've never seen anything Mm -hmm. like it. She said, the young people do not want to work at a place like this. And she said, we're offering them more money. They're even paying for their college. She said, we're throwing everything at them and they don't want to do it. I think it's a combination of things. I said, I, I, and I said this to her, I think they, younger people have found another way to make income and probably more income where they have more control. Like on they're, Twitch, they're right, playing they're, video games right, for money. They're very into social media and there's other income revenue streams that they're utilizing. And I think there's a little laziness involved. No, they still got to have they, money. No, but I think they want to make as much money with as little effort as possible. And they'd rather sit on their butt at home well, yeah. and play video games and actually go out. And I, I said to you, I worry about the future of the country with this generation because they're not into any kind of manual labor. No, they're not. They're not, they're not into driving trucks. That's true. They're not into w- waitressing. You know, our generation, generation X, we're workhorses. Our generation is known for, for working. And we work. That's how we were raised. Uh, we all had jobs. It, it is, as Brian, you've been working since he was like 14. It worked at Publix. 15. I worked at the mall yeah. starting at 16. And, and, and in college, I worked at Sears. And then, and you know, we are a generation that started working because that was the only way to make money was going working at a fast food or retail or babysitting. Mm-hmm. Now there's other ways to make money when you're young and make a lot of it. And you don't have to leave your house. And so it's a different thing. So I worry about the country in 20, 30 years when that generation is older, maybe the country will adapt, but who's going to drive the trucks? You have to talk about the supply chain. Who's going to work in these manual jobs? These young people, plus the guys are so wimpy these days. There's these young people don't seem to want to get their hands dirty. Yeah, that's true. Now, uh, I want to talk to you guys about Mike Lindell, the Thomas Edison of sleep, the inventor of the MyPillow. And, you know, over Black Friday weekend, he is doing a marathon stream on Frank's speech over Black Friday weekend. It's going to be like two, three days, Mike Lindell nonstop. That's, that's, <laughs> it's going to be pretty wild. So you guys will want to check that out. Now, I was telling you all last week, I was, uh, I was very lucky. I was, I was part of a, uh, a conference with Mike Lindell himself. And it was a conference for people that, Mike Lindell advertises with, like he aver- like he's a sponsor of, of uh, me and the Steve Kane show of our podcast here. And it was a conference of people like that. And it was, a, I was pretty honored to be in it. And Mike Lindell was talking about this cancel culture he's dealing with, you know, this cancel culture. They've got him basically out of every retail store. He's gone. It's out of all the retail stores. I, you know, um, That's crazy. the, the, the tele, both of the, well, all of the television shopping networks yep. and, you know, Yep, he's been this canceled is, really pretty much almost off everything. Yeah. And this this is mainstream. this is a terrible thing. Here here we have a country that had over a year of shutdowns and lockdowns. And Mike Lindell employs over 20,000 people. Incredible. Okay? I mean 20,000 people make their living off of off of In the uh, United MyPillow. States, not over yeah, in, in some Minnesota. other country. Yeah, and, you know, I mean there's a lot of thousands of people work for him and they all have families. So thousands and thousands of people earn a living and for anyone 
to organize any type of cancel culture against a business that is supporting thousands of families of, with American jobs, I think it's pretty disgraceful. And Mike Lindell asked if we would talk about what he's going through, and it's worse than, than we thought. I didn't realize he'd been knocked out of I, – I knew he'd been knocked out of some of those big retailers, but even some of the smaller ones. So that's taken a severe impact on him. And Mike Lindell is being sued personally, and his company is being sued personally for over $1 billion. And he is not a billionaire. Mm -hmm. He may be a millionaire. I'm sure he's a millionaire. He deserves it. He invented this, this, these great products. But if he loses this lawsuit, they're talking about taking his company away Incredible. from him. There's, ar there's articles in liberal, the liberal media fantasizing about the day that they'll be able to do this. So not only is he facing that, and he's got to have a legal team going up against them. He's yeah. countersuing. So he's got like another legal team dealing with that. And Mike Lindell was interviewed on Right Side Broadcasting. And um, Liz Willis from Right Side Broadcasting said to Mike Lindell, how can people help you? And he said, go to MyPillow.com and buy something. That's the best way you can help me and help my company well, and my employees. It's Christmas time. And I have to tell you, I have a few things I'm going to get my parents on the, my, on the MyPillow website. And the way, the, like you said, the best way to support him is to buy from his store. And I'm telling you, you can do a lot of your Christmas shopping through MyPillow.com. He has so many amazing products. You know how he has the pillows with the biblical saying? Now he has patriotic pillows. That's right. He's selling. You can find something literally for everybody. I don't know about you, but my parents are really hard to shop for because they're older and they really have everything they could want. So I like to get them things that are thoughtful and something they're going to use. I like practical gifts. I don't like frivolous gifts that somebody's going to look at and waste and, and forget waste a week things, later. Yeah. But if you give them a practical gift, like you always say, like the pillows or the topper uh, with some sheets, every night when they go to bed, they are going to think of you and they're going to be like, wow, I'm so glad my son or daughter or my grandkids got me this topper and these sheets because I'm sleeping so, well, it is something you know they will use for years and years and years now, to come gladly and be so thankful. Now, I have a link in the description of the episode here. Mike Lindell at MyPillow gave us our own MyPillow website. It's MyPillow.com slash Kane, K-A-N-E. Now, you still have to use our promo code Kane at checkout to get these incredible deals, K-A-N-E. But there's incredible deals even better than what you see on the MyPillow website. Um, site itself. And I want to go over a couple of these. The MyPillow My Slippers, which I have, these are wonderful slippers. They come in many different styles and colors for both men and women. I have the tan moccasin fur lined slippers with our promo code Kane, K A N E, 50% off the My Pillow My Those are Slippers. Nice. Now you were talking about the patriotic pillows. Yeah. The patriotic pillow sets, which are amazing. One's They're the really American nice. flag, one's the Statue of Liberty. They're beautiful pillows. Uh Normally, the set of my pillow patriotic pillows normally is one hundred forty dollars. If you go to our special link, mypillow.com slash cane, and use our promo code cane at checkout, K A N E, not one hundred forty dollars, but forty nine ninety eight. Pretty good deal. Well, I wanted to talk about something going on with the um, Kyle Rittenhouse okay. thing. Um, Jack Posobiec just tweeted that a witness said that Kyle Rittenhouse did not fire until this other guy raised his gun and pointed it at Kyle and was advancing on him. Yeah. So I still say he shouldn't have been there, but there are a lot of witnesses coming forward that are saying that he, that makes it seem like it was more of a self-defense thing. So I'll stand oh, yeah. corrected on that point. I still feel he shouldn't have been there, but yeah, if no doubt. there were people advancing on him or threatening him, um, you know, that can change things. I still think it's going to be a hung jury, though. I don't think he's going to get acquitted or convicted. I think it'll be a hung jury because it, I think people are going to be well, split on I, that. I want to play this audio. This is George Floyd's nephew talking about photographing the members of the jury in the Rittenhouse case. This is really scary. Listen to this. I ain't even going to name the people that I know that's up in the, in the Kenosha, I mean, in the Kenosha trial. But there's cameras in there. Yep. There's definitely cameras up in there, and there's definitely right. people taking pictures of the juries and everything like that. We know what's going on. So we need the same results, man. We need the same results. Justice for Dante Wright. Justice for Austin. Okay, that means guilty. 
And the reason – the only reason you would take photographs of the jury when they're being hidden from view from the press is to uh, – an intimidation factor. And I know some people are saying – because I've had people say this to me. Um, he's lying. He's bluffing. They're not taking pictures. That may be true. It may not be true. But the jury, you, you want them to take a risk with their families on what might be true, what might not be true. Is he bluffing? Is he not? This guy should be arrested. Well, and the question also is if Kyle Rittenhouse was a black guy, would this guy feel the same way? Nope. No, no. but what's, Not at all. You know, the, the witnesses last week in the Kyle Rittenhouse case, this case, I understand that it, you know, it, it on the face of it, it looks like something. But the witnesses last week totally cleared Kyle Rittenhouse. I, I, they did. They and him for sure. the prosecutors should not have even taken this case to trial based on the eyewitness testimony and the loaded gun. And the, the one guy that was stomping, he had a, a, a gun in the chamber. And this prosecutor That's true. is very weird. Um, now, of course, I'm a Star Wars and Star Trek fan. I, I saw this. and I was just um, about to bring this up. And, I, you know, Kathy and I have... Star Wars wedding bands. These, we do. <laughs> these are not the wedding bands we got married with. No. Okay. I, I, no. We, no. Yeah, we have real <laughs> rings that, but we also have like these $20 Star Wars wedding bands. Yeah. And I, I, big which, Star Wars which is bands. what I typically wear other than the, well, the, the, the wedding band I have that we got, we've been married 25 years yeah. in December. Next month, we're month yeah, less than a month yeah, away from our 20. Right. So uh, the, the ring that I have when we got married. 25 years ago. This is a very interesting thing. I did not know this could happen to, to gold wedding bands, but apparently it th they shrink because it's much tighter on my finger than it was 25 I, I years ago. I don't think it's the wedding band. <laughs> <laughs> he sure didn't, didn't shrink. But the uh, the Star yeah. Wars wedding band fits fits perfect. But um, it's true. It's true. But this uh, the prosecutor has been wearing every day a different one, a Star Trek lapel or a Star, Star Wars a, pin, a Star Wars lapel pin. Yes, a I Star saw. Wars lapel pin. I mean, I think that's really cool, but I think it's a it, little it's, it's probably not appropriate. It yeah. is not appropriate. Makes him look kind of immature and juvenile. I'm sure George Lucas. I mean, that's really weird. George Lucas, whose wife is black from Chicago and is a big part of Black Lives Matter. I'm sure George Lucas's wife has told George about this. Do you think the jury picked up on that? I would notice a Rebel Alliance pin right away. One of them was a Rebel. One, right. One was he, the he Fal Millennium Red, Falcon. Yeah, one was the Millennium mm -hmm. Falcon. I would notice that right away. And even though I love Star Wars, it would make me feel like this guy just wasn't taking things seriously. Like this it's is childish. Like, it's childish. It's I mean, not professional. It, it's really weird. Well, let's see if he keeps wearing them. Now that it's got out in the news today, let's see if he still wears. He might wear pins. more of them. He might oh wear more my often. Gosh, no, no one's as bad. He as should be wearing an American flag. No, no one's as bad as Hannity with all these. All the he has like more lapel pins on than <laughs> I've seen anybody wear. Hannity is really rid ridiculous. Now listen, I can't even watch his show. We're going to take a break. When we get back, there's a lot more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be back right after this. Cryptocurrency, it's what everyone's talking about because so many are looking for an alternative to physical currency. Godzilla Coin on Twitter at CoinGodzilla is leading a new community to a new DAO and NFT game. The whitelist and public sale will launch soon. Get your Godzilla Coins before the God of Lizards makes its way back to the big screen to defend planet Earth once more. Find Godzilla Coin on Twitter at CoinGodzilla. That's CoinGodzilla on Twitter and become a part of the Godzilla Army. Army, Coin Godzilla on Twitter. We all get the calls. We all get the emails. But can you tell the difference between a legitimate call or email and a scam? Scammers are working harder than ever before to take advantage of you, your identity, and your money. With some guidance and perspective, the book, A Cure for the Common Scam, available on Amazon, will help walk you through steps you can take to protecting yourself against the common scams of today. Explained in non-technical, straightforward, and practical terms, you will learn why a passphrase may be more secure than a password. Word, how to safeguard your bank and investment accounts, how to stay safe while shopping online, and much more. You do not have to fall victim to schemes of scammers. Learn what it takes to stand up to them and protect yourself today. Available now on Amazon in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook. A cure for the common scam, a non technical guide for navigating the pitfalls of the internet. 
the book, Let Me Perish from Starvation's Love by Limelight, is now available on Amazon. When Limelight's mind goes a-wandering, look out. From hysterically funny to tragic, this collection of short stories and poems will have you scratching your skull and wondering what kind of person can come up with these weird, wacky words. Let Me Perish from Starvation's Love will surely keep you entertained and ultimately expose you to seeing the world in a new light. Let Me Perish from Starvation's Love by Limelight is available on Amazon and Kindle and paperback on Amazon. Order your copy right now. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. I was just looking at Fox News. Biden's approval rating nears rock bottom levels. Saki. Oh, Saki's back. I guess she's she's coming back. She had the COVID. She's coming back. Saki says Biden approval ratings are low because people are tired of fighting the pandemic that he vowed to shut down. Here's the deal. Well, they're never going to admit okay. that he's the problem. Here's the deal with the pandemic. It is over. And that doesn't mean that people still don't get sick. Uh, a friend of mine recently passed away from COVID. Some of you know who that is, a, a radio person, radio personality I was friends with and Steve Kane was friends with. So people are still getting it, and there are people who sadly pass, and there's things that yeah. happen. But the world always has sickness in it. And what, what's happened is mm-hmm. people have changed their behaviors. It has now oh, been sure. almost two years and I, I hate saying this because then my, my luck will run out, but it's, it's been almost two years. It has. Maybe two years now since I've had a cold or a flu. Mm-hmm. And I have had multiple colds and flus every year of my life in my memory. And it's really tough because even when I have a cold or a flu, I'll still work even on the air. Mm-hmm. Rarely do I miss a day. And even when I can't talk, yep. uh, I'll still find a way to do a talk show. And the reason I haven't gotten a cold or a flu, I believe, is because all of us have changed our our behaviors. We wash our hands more. We don't. True. We do things differently. What you know? What the the main hand sanitizer? Yeah. The main thing I do. Yeah. I, I was always. I had become a germ a foe before the pandemic a little bit. I I was at Disney World and I was in line and a kid coughed on my arm. This was before, right before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Coughed on my arm. I and remember this. The next day I had a really bad cold and flu. He coughed on my arm like really bad. And his parents, you know, everyone's afraid of getting sued, so they didn't even apologize because they thought that would be admitting that they their son had done mm-hmm. something. It was very rude. But one of the main things you've changed, which everybody <clears throat> should change, is when you get gas. That's the one thing you that should I really take do. a paper towel. Yeah. Or Brian uses like bags, um, but you should not hold the handle with your bare hand. And if you do, wash your hand or use the hand sanitizer. Yeah. But I would recommend not even touching that handle because I, that is yeah. probably one thing, one of the main things in society that you come in contact with that is touched by many, many, many Hundreds of people a day. Thousands a month. I, I would not touch now, a gas handle. I was doing this before the pandemic because yeah, it's, on, it's on the Florida Turnpike, I stopped and got gas on the Florida Turnpike. This is before the pandemic and uh, long before the pandemic. They they have at the at the gas stations on the Florida Turnpike, they've had like plastic gloves that you can wear that are free. Yeah. And it says each month – the number is like 13,000 hands touch each pump or 30 some That's thousand. Nuts. And I stopped touching gas pumps way before then. But what I do now is what Kathy says. I usually will get the paper towels at the gas pump to wash yeah. the windows with. And I'll hold the gas pump with that. Sometimes one of our Patreon supporters, Gary, gave me this idea last year. And this is a good one. I use the plastic grocery bags mm-hmm. and I use those to get the gas pumps. And, but people have changed their behavior so much they have. in the last year and a half that they're not passing germs around as much as we used to. And it's not that, that, the, that the, the, the COVID's gone. It's just that people are more cautious now and are safer in general True. so far as colds and flus. And for me to go now almost two years without a cold or a flu is absolutely amazing. And I haven't changed, other than the gas pump, I haven't changed much of anything. I've mm-hmm. traveled. Um, I'm getting ready to go on our listener cruise in January. We're going to go to uh, Jamaica and Aruba and Bonaire and Curacao, and you are all invited except Al the John. You're not invited. The rest of you are invited to go with us, and I know some of you are, 
And this is going to be a great cruise. This is our fifth listener cruise. I can't believe this is our fifth listener That's cruise. That's crazy. I know. I know. I remember when you did the first one and you got you and it was Steve a weekend were like, cruise. A li- yeah, it was a little week, like a three day thing. And you're worried nobody would go. I was worried. <laughs> I didn't know. I never done it. <laughs> and now you you have one every year. And we have you, one every year. And, and many many people. Well, go. many. It, I'd been trying to get Steve Kane to do a listener cruise oh, yeah. for a long time, and he didn't want to do it. And w- the reason he didn't want to do it is m- when I first started working with him, before I was like really on the show, I was just like running his board, he did a listener trip to England, mm-hmm. to London. It was a three-day trip to London, which isn't that's, very long. That's not very long. No, it's not. Yeah. And you they, need at least five days. And they did everything on tour buses, and there was one of the – it was a real cheap trip, and it was one of the really weird chronic caller listeners went mm-hmm. and just drove everyone, including Steve Nuts, and he <laughs> he, he vowed, I'll never do a listener. Right. And I bugged him for years to do it, and he's like, okay, we'll do this cruise, but it, it was a long weekend. It was like a four-day weekend right. cruise, and I didn't know people would go with us, and now here we are. Taking our fifth one. This one's nine days, and uh, it's I incredible. do. Yeah, I do mean it. You guys are uh, all invited, and I better. I should give out the number. And it's a fun group. It's all Trump supporters it. and and MAGA people, and and everybody has a good time. And there's dancing and drinking and excursions, and and it's a lot of fun. And people make. Oh yeah. People have you know you really bring a lot of people together because people from across the country have become friendly with each other and 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 stay in touch and actually go on other vacations with each other. Now this one is, it's our, our Steve Kane Trump 2022 MAGA cruise. It's on the celebrity Equinox out of Fort Lauderdale. It's a nine day cruise. We leave on a Friday and return the following Sunday. And what had happened was we had a cruise that was going to go, I can't remember when the last one was supposed to be, but it gotten canceled because of the pandemic. That's and right. When the cruise line first, I think it was last last year was November. It was going to be in November or just something. It was going to be yeah. right after the election. Yeah, it was going to be December or January. I think it was December, December or January. Yeah. I can't and um, when the when the pandemic hit and they first closed down the cruise lines, I knew the rates had dropped on future cruises. And mm-hmm. Ian of Cruise and Travel Depot, he's our travel agent for all the cruises. I called Ian and I said, "Let's." set up the next cruise now, which we know, would not normally do two, almost two years in advance yeah. because we're, he's like, you know what? I, we'll get a really good deal. So he said, well, let me call you right back. He called me back within five minutes. The rates were so low. Wow. I said, let's do it. So we blocked out all of our space on this trip that we're doing. So we, we Yeah, got, you've been planning it for a while this Well, one. because we did this where the cruise lines were panicked because cruising's back in Florida. It's been back for months in yeah. Florida. We have- the height of the pandemic rates on the cruise. And the Celebrity Equinox is a luxury cruise ship. Now, cruises are traveling with less than half the number of passengers as normal. Right. So there's going to be a, between a, about 1,000, 1,200 on this ship that's made for over three. And that's amazing. <laughs> we basically have our own private cruise ship. And the Celebrity Equinox, we took a cruise on this ship uh, about three years ago. But since then, the ship was dry docked, completely refitted, and remodeled. Everything about it. And it's even a you know, brand new paint job on the outside. You wouldn't even recognize the ship. And Celebrity Cruises is a luxury cruise line. And you really, truly are all mm-hmm. invited. Drinks are included. And, and Brian um, has some videos. If you go to my his YouTube, YouTube channel. Brian Craig, um, there's videos there mm-hmm. of uh, mm-hmm. past cruises that um, Brian took great footage of. I edited those. Yeah. And uh, they're, I think they're pretty good videos. They're, they're if I a do lot say of fun. so myself. They're a lot of fun. And the, the, the cruises began because you guys know I don't take much time off work. So we did this as a way for me to get a vacation, and it turned into an exciting <laughs> thing. That's why Brian kept pushing it and so much. And we have dinner together every night. We have shipboard activities together. We uh, take shore excursions together. This one, it's fun. Uh, one of our stops is Jamaica, which I've never been to. I'm very excited about. We are taking an excursion as a group. We have our own private tour That'll bus. That'll be fun. To uh, what's called the Dunn Falls, which are those famous waterfalls that you've seen in all of the movies and TV shows mm-hmm. in Jamaica. We're planning an excursion at another destination, which we're still working on. But we're also going to Aruba, Coruscant, and Bonaire. And it's, it's going to be exciting. So let me give Ian's number out, okay? It's uh, Ian at Cruise and Travel Depot. The number is 561-244. Fifty-seven seventy-nine five six one two four four fifty-seven seventy-nine. You guys will love it. You really have a great time, and you really are all invited. 
and it's a great MAGA family. We'll take a break and be right back. Don't go anywhere. Now available wherever books are sold. Who okayed this? The riveting life of Grant Davis. The author is using a pseudonym because there have been several attempts made on his life. The first was on a chilly gray morning on December 17th in the winter of 2012. He received a collect call from Sing Sing from an individual stating that he was going to kill him and that he won't see it coming. In the several months since, in the early morning hours when fear gets the best of him, and this happens all the time, like clockwork ticking in the back of his mind, wondering if one day, if his life would be taken away from him, and if that horrible ticking that keeps haunting him would ever stop. Scared, alone, and afraid because his life was in danger, he began writing. But in the summer of 2013, his life changed forever. He woke up in the hospital in agony from being crushed between two cars. Wearing a Philadelphia collar around his neck, steel wrist splints on both wrists, a cast from his right knee down to his toes, and left, confined to a scooter for mobility. He knew then that his life would never be the same again. At this point, desperate to reveal his story before the possibility of his ultimate demise, since he didn't have the use of his hands, he began frantically dictating to his computer, and this evolved into the foundational platform for this book based on true events. Who okayed this? The riveting life of Grant Davis. Available everywhere books are sold. Visit philipebarrington.com. From author Brenda Cullen comes the children's book, Wash My Hands, from the Growing Up with Riley book series. Riley has so many things to remember to do during her busy day. Pick up her toys, make up her bed, brush her teeth, and take care of her pet. Such a busy day that it's easy to sometimes forget something. One day, Riley forgets to wash her hands before dinner, and Dad quickly reminds her of this all-important health rule. Realizing that remembering when and how to wash her hands throughout the day is her responsibility, Riley is up for the challenge. Fun-loving, inquisitive Riley. Riley is on the path to practicing hand cleanliness in this wonderful instructional book. Wash My Hands from the Growing Up with Riley series is vibrant and filled with illustrations with pulsating, unforgettable rhymes and repetition. This jumbo size interactive picture book is for early readers between the ages of 3 and 8. It will entertain and teach children when and how to wash their hands, a life skill essential to maintaining good health. Children will remember and instinctively practice hand cleanliness rules. Wash My Hands is perfect for family time and classroom reading. Riley Riley's clever rhyme will definitely have kids happily repeating each time they wash their hands. Also, visit Riley's PlayStation online at KaloaBooks.com. There you will find fun and challenging interactive downloadable activities for children, parents, and teachers. Wash My Hands, the Growing Up with Riley books from author Brenda Cullen. Available on Amazon, BarnesandNoble.com, Walmart, and IngramSpark. Want to get more things done when you are feeling overwhelmed and trapped? Author Mitchell Reed has written the book that you've been looking for. Action Plan for Achieving Success Under Stress, available on Amazon. Unlike other stress books, this book shows you strategies necessary to handle stress, remain calm, and get your job done. When you read Action Plan for Achieving Success Under Stress, you will discover strategies to handle overwhelming tasks so that you complete the jobs under tight deadlines. You will learn ways to deal with impatient people at work that empowers you to survive through tough situations and thrive. You will learn how to motivate yourself despite being under a heavy workload. You will also learn five quick methods to de-stress in the workplace and much, much more. Action plan for achieving success under stress from author Mitchell Reed. Order your copy right now on Amazon. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. During the break, I pulled up the New York Post, and I got scared. They had Billy Joel on the front, and it said, Not so grand piano man. I thought Billy Joel had died. And it's a front page story about his weight loss, really. Is news that slow in New York City? Are they going to talk about Billy Joel's weight loss? Well, he had back surgery, he said, and he said he was in so much pain he couldn't eat. You know, I am a huge Billy Joel fan. I've seen him in concert, okay? And Billy Joel screwed up all his music for me. He had an album that came out that you got me. You got me this album. It was a greatest hits album. About five or ten years ago. Oh, that was way longer than when that. He, when he talked about his songs. Yeah. And he went through these different songs that I just thought were so meaningful and everything. And they really mean nothing, not even to him. They just basically rhyme. I was so disappointed 
when he told this story about Piano Man to like spoil the music. But no, I, I'm a big fan of Billy Joel. I, I saw a video. I've never been a big Billy Joel fan. I saw a video. Oh, yeah, I love Billy Joel. Yeah. I love Billy Joel. Um, I, I, except uh, uh, You're Only Human. I don't like that. When he does that 50s doo-wop thing, you know, I don't like That's that. That's the song. one song I do like. Oh, really? It's got good lyrics. No, I, I'm a big Billy Joel fan. There's a video I saw of him on YouTube that is probably fake, but he was, he just, Billy Joel just happens to be walking down the sidewalk somewhere and there's a guy selling it, throwing out a piano. Like it's on the side of the road. Could happen. And Billy Joel's coming by and then he starts playing the piano. Well, immediately that piano is valuable because Billy Joel played Absolutely. and sang playing the piano. I don't know what the guy did with the piano. But you were telling Probably about this. Kept it, I would you know, li- liberals have lost their minds and this story out of San Francisco oh, is, is so hilarious. strange. Well, this goes with, the government telling you to lower your expectations now. Now they want you to change your perception of reality. Yeah. So this goes with this. Yeah. Well, apparently <laughs> the newspaper out there in San Francisco told people that there's a new normal and that they should become accustomed and tolerate burglaries, That's which include right. break-ins, of course. And yes. car break-ins are up over 700% in San Francisco. The San Francisco Chronicle ripped for asking if residents – can tolerate burglaries. So that's what it is. San Francisco has seen an increase in shootings, assaults, shoplifting, car break-ins, and more in recent months. The city's central district, by way of example, experienced a 753% increase in car break-ins. Holy mackerel. More than 150 families were so fearful, they even hired private security. You know, San Francisco, I went there when I was 13, and I thought it was one of the greatest cities I'd ever seen. We went to Alcatraz yeah. and ate on Fisherman's Wharf, had some of the best food I'd ever have. This was a once great city, another city destroyed by the Democrats. The rate of burglaries has been particularly concerning as of October 31st. This is two weeks ago. San Francisco police have received eight reports of 810 burglaries or attempted burglaries this year in the jurisdiction of the Mission District Police Station, a 13% increase from this time last year. Crime has become so commonplace in the city that the Chronicle asked if readers if asked readers if residents should start to tolerate burglaries. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, this is the whole thing of lowering your expectations. Well, Expect crime now, people. You know, the, in these areas where they don't even prosecute if you shoplift a certain amount of money, the, liberal, the liberals have lost their mind. And the, the left have gotten so crazy that even James Carville is sounding like a conservative That's against I, I know. the defund. He said that James Carville, who was Bill Clinton's campaign manager in 1992, senior advisor to Bill Clinton, very liberal guy. You know, even he's saying that this defund the police idea is stupid. It is. And they need to drop this wokeism if they want to win. And then AOC is attacking him. And MSNBC is saying we're tired of hearing from white men. I don't understand how liberals can think that that crime is acceptable. What is wrong with these people? It's one thing to be kind and try to help people, but nobody should tolerate crime. Crime should not be tolerated. You should feel safe. You pay taxes to be protected. To have a fireman and ambulance. That's police the primary officers. purpose of government. That is the purpose yeah. of government is yeah. to protect you. What now? All of a sudden, we're on, in the twilight zone where crime is supposed to be a, an expectation. Yes. That's correct. What the hell? These people are literally living on another planet. Yeah, they I are. don't understand. They are how they. But this is what's going to happen. People, you know, you talked about. We talked earlier in a show how people have talked about the country dividing and and becoming two different governments and all the people talking about this, that's going to start happening naturally because Mm -hmm. people are going to start leaving these crazy wackadoo liberal places and moving to Florida, moving to Texas. So you're going to see a division that is going to start naturally occurring in this country because so many people are leaving these wackadoo cities. Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it makes no sense at all. Well, liberals make no sense. And that, that's not even liberalism. It, it used to be— That's insanity. It used to, it, Liberals have always been the activist, have been soft on crime. But even Bill Clinton, you know, Bill, I remember when Bill Clinton was governor of Arkansas and running for president, he left the campaign trail to go back to Arkansas to sign the death warrant to execute a man who, had, who was mentally retarded. Now, guys, remember that? Oh, my gosh. So, so activists in the Democrat Party have always been soft on crime, but those in charge in the Democrat Party 
have always been tough on crime because even liberal people don't want to be robbed or raped and killed. And now would it, it it's hard to believe crazy. it's really hard to believe the positions that the liberals have. And over the weekend on MSNBC, they tore in all weekend long to James Carville, as did AOC, that this this old white man needs to shut up and he needs to understand this is what's different now and he doesn't get it and he's old, he needs to retire. Well, they, she kind of proved his point because now she's canceling him because of his age. Age is his race. Ageism. So you know, and she, racism. Yeah. So, you know, she kind of proved his point for now, him. Now, the millennials believe, and I first started seeing this after the Parkland shooting, they, they'll say this all the time. Our opinions are more valid than yours because you're going to be dead while we're still alive. We're going to be here <laughs> after you're dead. They don't understand that every moment there's been babies born while we've been doing this podcast. Exactly. So should that baby have an opinion above yours because they're going to be on earth after you? It's That's a, just more bizarre. That's like the... The logic of the supply chain. Well, you don't know what it means, so you don't. So it it doesn't exist. I really think that these problems we have on the left, are the, it's the processed foods. There's just too many processed foods. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think it's what the it soy is. milk. I don't know what it is. Now, um, Ronna McDaniel, who is Mitt Romney's niece, and Trump made the you know Republican very disappointed leader. in her. You know, Trump had to make a deal, I guess, with her to give her that position. And now she's out there trashing Trump. She's another one with the, there's so many books out there. Who reads all these books? No, she's it's not her book. She's quoted. Oh, in the, oh yeah, that's right. Jonathan it's the Carl's story book. involves her. Yeah, yeah, Jonathan Carl's book. And but still, and she's she's a disappointment. Trump was done with the Republican Party. Uh, it goes on in this book, and then he was going to start his own party and all this stuff. And they're trashing Trump. And it's amazing to me, Jonathan Carl. He's with the mainstream media. He's got this book out with Ronna McDaniel. These people in the media hate Trump, but every book they write is about Trump. Well, what happened is they he's make a saying, off Trump. that's right, he's saying in the book that Trump, on January 20th, the day he was leaving, that morning, got in a fight with Ronna McDaniel, and he said to her, I'm going to form my own party, screw the Republicans, this is what they deserve for abandoning me. And that's what this guy wrote in this yeah. book, that this was a conversation. Mm -hmm. And that may or may not have happened. I'm sure that's how he felt. Because I think they did abandon him, and he did feel frustrated. I, but you know what? How can you abandon somebody that you're never with in the first place? Well, you know what I mean. They know, were never with this guy when when Trump left office. He there was there was talk that he was going to form a third party, a MAGA party, and then he realized it would be better just to drain the swamp in the Republican Party. I still think he should have, and that's what he's doing now. Now it would be that'd be a losing proposition. It would I be, don't know. Even t Teddy Roosevelt tried that, and he was very popular, and it yeah, you know, well, it didn't work. If he can the overturn things, yeah, and get some of these swamp creatures out, well, like, that's what he's doing. Like Cheney. Well, now Kinzinger, for whatever reason, I'm very curious about this, is not running again, and the media has been really silent on this, of which I'm surprised. They really haven't reported. Well, like they didn't report on Cuomo getting arrested, which isn't going to happen now. But Kinzinger, they've really been silent on him not rerunning. What is that about? I don't know. Well, Ronna McDaniel was saying that, oh, he turned his back on the party that elected him. The Republican Party did not elect Trump. It was no, the people that elected right. him. And the Republican Party was always against him. They they were going to have a brokered convention in 2015 and and, and take the nomination from him. That's right. So uh, they no. were never on his no. side. That's why I said you no. can't abandon somebody that's never been with you yeah. in the first place. So the Republican Party never was behind Trump. Remember yeah. when Paul Ryan, when he was speaker, disinvited Trump to an event after the Access Hollywood tape? So no, he was not elected by the Republican Party. Now, I want to thank our uh, Patreon supporters for their support of the program. Thank you so much. And if you would like to support the show by becoming a Patreon supporter, there is a link in the description of this episode, and there's a lot of perks to doing that, which are listed there on our Patreon page. And one of those perks, our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you on every episode. So the names you are about to hear are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, ETW, Gary, Chuck, Nick, Rick, Rich, Pamela, Paul, D, and Jacqueline, our top Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your support. And again, there's a link to our Patreon page in the description of this and every episode. Well, listen, we're all out of time, but we'll be back next time. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Thanks for listening, everyone, and we will talk to you next time. 
there is nothing like unique art to make your space look extra special. Not only is it a statement piece and a conversation piece, it is also a timeless treasure. Nate's Art Boutique, that's all one word, on Etsy, features poured acrylic art that is colorful and expressive with creative textures, patterns, and light reflections. No matter what your space or style, the art at Nate's Art Boutique on Etsy is beautiful and thought-provoking. Artist Nathan takes great care in each piece, and there are even some hidden treasures you can see if you look closely enough. These pieces are perfect for your home, office, or business. Inspired by nature, space, and other elements, this art is the perfect addition to your walls. Visit the shop on Etsy right now. Search Nate's Art Boutique. That's all one word on Etsy. Nate's Art Boutique on Etsy. 